right, Mopar people, welcome back to the channel. I'm just Mopar Joe. You may have found my channel from different build series on Mopar small and big block engines, but today I wanted to share with you, if you are installing some new aluminum heads on your big or small block, these are the things that you should check before you bolt them down. I'm gonna to try to categorize this in a listed format of some kind. So hopefully you can follow along with that. If you know any more that I haven't mentioned, please drop them in the comments. I don't know everything in the world and a lot of my viewers are more experienced in the Mopar game than I am, but I have a little bit of experience. So let me show you what I've come up with here. So this is our 440 build that I am doing for a buddy of mine. Uh, it is about somewhere around 10 and a half to one. I did all the specs in a prior video, but what this engine is getting is the Trick Flow 240 uh, CNC ported cylinder head. Just gonna dive right into it here. My first step, this is a, I wanna say a 68 or nine model block, and it does not have the giant chamfer on top of the cylinder. So my first step I wanna check, I know this cylinder, or I know this block is straight, dead level and true, as it has been blueprinted and perfectly shaved so I don't have to worry about that. It's got a great surface for my gasket. That's, that's awesome. Same thing on the head itself. But before I pop the head out of the box, because they are wrapped up and clean and ready to bolt on, I'm going to check the gasket itself. It is that gasket part number. It is a Cometic 5461-040. Uh, and it is a 4380 bore. So we want to be sure that the gasket itself does not hang into the cylinder. You can clearly see there's a load of room right here, but this gasket itself being a MLS actually seals right on the very tip or point of that ring right there. So that's what's connecting to the bottom of this block right now. The opposite side looks just like this. You can flip this gasket either way. There's no top or bottom. So being sure the gasket does not hang over right there. If you're nervous at all, buy it a little bit larger. See here, you can clearly see it. I know it's right there. See that shininess on the edge by my finger? This gasket is good to go, but I have to check it all the way around on every single cylinder. So. What that kind of looks like is me holding it down flush. Me holding it down flush without a camera in my hand and walking around looking at that very, very edge to be sure there's no hangover. Here is our Trick Flow 240. So if you own a pair of these or bought a pair to put on your big block Mopar, you're really gonna like this video, I think. What I did here, this is an old pair of dowel pins of some kind. I stuck those in. You can even use like an old head bolt. See how it has the step on it. Just drop a few in. And what you're looking for is again, more hangover into the cylinder itself. So it looks like here we're perfectly right on the edge. And I know we don't have a problem sealing because our sealing ring itself is definitely over the edge. It's almost on the edge right there but it's all good to go. This is nice. The closer you get that, the uh, better off your build will be. You're better off being safe than sorry. Just going all the way around. And I'll do this again without a camera in my hand, but I'm just kind of showing you my little process here. Our next step, you can see that little oil hole right there. The factory oil holes were much, much larger than that. There's also one on this side in case you had to head uh, turn to the opposite bank. On a big block Mopar, they oil to the heads through here and here, if it's a factory setup like I'd normally have. And it comes off that number four cam bearing. So that's the factory size. It's reduced down in this head. It is crucially important, it being reduced down like that, to be sure it is open and clean. Clean them both out. So I could even add to that, go ahead and blow, get your compressed air, that is your for sure um, doesn't have water in it, and blow through that hole and all the other holes in this head, be sure it's cleaned out. The way they come packed and all that stuff, a lot of times they have to be, they need to be checked out anyway, 
but if your machinist didn't clean it up very well, then you need to double check that. But even if they did, something could land in that hole and prevent all the oil from going to the top end of the rocker shaft. So grab your head and carefully set it down. Careful,er. Now, that one dropped. That one dropped. Now, be sure. I did this a while back in my 360 engine build, but I haven't shown it in a while. I like to be sure it goes flat all the way down and around. Looks nice. See how we're a little high right there? Why? Why is that? Now, sometimes the dowel pins themselves, I'll show you this one, if they're boogered up or messed up or any of that, or if just the, if they're the wrong size. Uh, Rick Seaman said he's had some that were the incorrect size before, or the holes in the heads are the wrong size for those dowel pins, and you try to just go ahead and bolt it down, they're not going to let it go all the way down and seat. So we're looking really nice and good. So that's just a simple check you can do. So next step is checking for distributor clearance right here. And I know it sounds silly, but a lot of heads out there, those aren't machined or made to actually fit an aftermarket distributor. And some of them are not made to fit a uh, stock distributor. So just check your distributor when you drop it in. I'll show you what that looks like with a couple different distributors here. Here is the classic MSD Pro Billet 8546 for a big block actually 440 uh, Mopar. And I've got it sucked down all the way here. I didn't want to go ahead and put that hole down on and all that. It's pretty solid flat down in there. And it just clears by, ooh, 16th or so. I wouldn't be scared of that. I think that would be good. And also, I do not have a gasket on here. So if you think about the angle, the head itself is going to raise 40 thousandths, which you may think that's not a lot, but uh, moving down here all the way across is going to lift the entire head up. So that would give it just a little more room there. If you're nervous about it, right now is the time to take your die grinder and lightly massage that. You can see the air gap. It's there. There we go. So that one checks out. This is our FireCore performance distributor. Uh, same people who make the excellent plug wire. So if you need plug wires or you need a fire core performance billet distributor like this, it takes the Mopar standard cap and the old school wires. It plugs into your stock harness. You can call them direct and mention just Mopar Joe and get yourself a discount. Um, and I'm not just telling you that because I like them. I think they're legit. This is very well adjustable stuff. Anyway, back to our video. Let me try it in here and we'll check it next. And it's got, looks like an eighth of an inch or more all the way down. That's beautifully wonderful. You can adjust any way you'd like. Even the screw misses it. If the screw ended up on that side, you'd probably want your vacuum advance uh, timed correctly. But all that looks great. So definitely with your aluminum heads, check for your distributor clearance. I know on my Edelbrock E streets, I had to trim it. And that was just with a uh, my fast distributor that looked very similar to this. Now, next thing I wanted to talk about was head bolts themselves. I think you should buy the appropriate bolt for whatever head that you buy, but everything doesn't have to have head studs. I know a lot of people have to have head studs. Um, years and years and years, People ran like this ARP bolt. This is what Trick Flow sells or recommends with their kit here. I'll show you those. The head bolt kit, TFS 92025. And they're 7 16 bolts. This is a manly bolt. These are ARPs. And I went around in circles having to call three different people, or actually two people. I called Indy and I called, I think, uh, Mancini who sold the Indy EZ heads when I put those on around and around in circles and one company said use these without the washer because we were worried about the depth in those Indy heads there was only about 
three threads showing through the bottom and that is not enough. With these TrickFlow 240 heads, it appears that either one of these would work just fine. I do know they sell uh, washers to go under the manly bolts also. I'm not sure if I had some. This is just an old bolt that I had laying around. Uh, but the other thing I wanted to mention to you, and I'll move them over here and here is where it actually matters. The difference in the thickness of the two heads. So you can see the manly bolt has a thicker head than the ARP. And if you add the ARP to the washer, it is about the same thickness as this manly. But if you had a washer underneath that manly, which is probably what you typically want to do on aluminum head so it won't gall there, there's a chance whatever kind of headers you use, if you're using headers, may hit the top of that bolt. So just keep that in mind. Um, if at all possible, I would go ahead and buy the ARP bolts like they recommend here. Let's get into the little more advanced stuff here. I got uh, one bolt in my head. I just used the old blue Felpro gasket to stick this thing on here. And I could I actually have my uh, push rod checker in place. Something that you need to check and is crucially important is the distance between that push rod and the head itself. You can see it glowing right there. So it looks like in this ap application, there's a mile of room forward and back. Uh, but right now it's all relaxed. You can see this is, there's nothing, uh, there's no pressure on the lifter or anything like that. But when you preload the lifter and you rotate the engine over, then you can see the full travel of the push rod itself. But with this checker, I don't believe you're actually supposed to do that. You're supposed to have the small, lightweight checking springs in. Here I just swapped in a my solid uh, comp rotor lifter. And here I've got a more close to correct length push rod. This was out of a different 440 or raised deck engine. So all we're gonna do is check the sweep on this valve real quick, the valve stem tip. This is a black magic marker. I went ahead and tightened my rockers down on this one. My push rod is totally floppy loose. I don't, I don't actually want it tight yet. It's where the roller is contacting here. And all you need to do is release your rocker and you can go side to side, move it like that. Just give you a nice little rub imprint. You can also spin the wheel, just brandish that uh, marker off there. Remember, it's only going to be spinning. There'll be a small line side to side again. And we can pop her up and look. So what we're wanting is it's going to roll upward and come back down some uh, throughout its cycle. And while I'm at max lift on that lobe, I wanted to show you. I've got a mile around that push rod. It gets a little bit tighter at the top, but I bet there's still at least a eighth of an inch. So that is something that you should check on your new aluminum heads because they're totally different than whatever you had on before. And depending on how they've been milled or the shape of them, whatever, how they're cast versus your old head, you could have a valve train issue like that. So keep that in mind before you just bolt them on. You need to check your clearance right between the spring and the rocker arm on no matter what kind of spring or rocker you've got. This one has plenty of room here, it looks like. I know the Harlan Sharps have even more room than that, but you need to check it at max lift, check it at zero lift, all that. So this is after it was rolled over. I'm just showing this for fun. You don't have to do this when switching heads, but it's sometimes nice to, especially if you got high lift stuff. Uh, I think that's a slight, slight line there, if at all. I'm thinking these have a mile of space with these very deep um, valve reliefs in them. And as I peel that off, you can just see how deep that is. We were way up here, barely even touching it. And that is with this uh, blue Felpro gasket. So you can check it without a gasket, obviously. I just want to throw that in as... Uh, something you can check with your new head. And our final thing to check here with your new aluminum heads before you bolt them down, drop your intake on and see what the ports look like. 
And if you have a convoluted intake that you can't see down, you can always look at your bolt holes themselves. I know my light's a little bright. There we go. This one's looking pretty good. There are currently no gaskets and no valley pan in place. So the intake itself should be a little bit lower than the bolts themselves. And if you look on both sides right now, we're pretty well there. So that looks nice. It's not, remember it's, it kind of sets in a valley of the V here. There's not a, not a, not any rocking going on or anything like that. If you got a, uh, certain head gaskets will also hang up right here and you might have to trim them off, especially in small block stuff. Uh, but it's just a little different setup. But looking down the ports, they look pretty nice. I actually have a boroscope uh, that I'll use on my final check. But if we can look through there, it looks pretty nice. And we can just see the bottom. I think I can actually drop my, put my GoPro in place and you can, you'll be able to see the top as well. Let me try that. That lines up pretty nice right now, but what matters is when we put those gaskets on. So obviously before mounting your intake, bolt it down, check that because they do make different thickness gaskets. So depending on how much was decked off the block, um, you can kind of compensate for the intake placement with the gaskets in this situation. Other times you might just have to have the intake milled because there's no gasket that is thin enough uh, to work for you. So anyway, this is kind of starting to look like an engine now. I'm going to bolt it up, do a quick mock up. Hopefully this helped you if you bought some new aluminum heads and you are installing them on your anything really. It's stuff to look for. Like I said, if you have anything to add, i put it below in the comments and I appreciate y'all watching. I'll catch you next time. I had to do a quick little mock up here and add one more thing I forgot. Don't forget to add yours in the comments. If you've got angle plugged heads and they're brand new and you're putting them on, you may have some header clearance problems. So just think about that. If you're swapping from a straight plug head to the angle plug and you're trying to use the same headers, you may run into some issues there. So anyway, hope y'all come back for the build up and the dyno time.